it's obvious we are in Paris. As we try to obedient to stay home as much as we can in these crazy times, I thought it might be fun to take you out for this episode to this magnificent, bustling city. And I know that lots of my students really love to go to France and would like to go there to do some painting. Well, growing up in Amsterdam, what looks like a farmer's village comparing with Paris, we did a lot of camping in France, in the south of France. And we always visited Paris on our way to the south, risking our lives on the infamous highway in the Périphérique. But it was always worthwhile to do it. In this episode, I will show you around and tell you how I was inspired to make the next painting of a Paris alley. So let me take you by the hand and lead you to the streets of Paris. I show you something to make you change your mind. Hello and welcome in my studio. Today we're going to do an exciting painting of a medieval alley behind the Sacre Coeur in Paris. Believe me, we have a lot to do. So, at work. Yes, at work. When you start a city street, you need an horizon with two vanishing points. We use the palette stick as a ruler and on one third we make an horizon which we never will see. In the corners we place two crosses for the vanishing points. We draw the first verti vertical line for the first wall. And not quite straight because in medieval Paris nothing is straight. When we start doing the windows we really have to watch out that we got the right perspective. The upper part of the left point of the window goes in the direction of the right vanishing point down below. And all my lines go to that same vanishing point. And this is how we create perspective. By the way, I use English red mixed with a bit of titanium white. And this works great for basic drawings, drawings as the red will come back a long, long time to other layers of paint. And this might be very handy if you got confused or lost, you always can find back your first drawing lines. The dark windows can be filled up with English red. And sorry for the wild movements with the stick, but otherwise it's not gonna work. It looks very mathematic, but at the end we will loosen up the lines and make it more romantic. Don't forget, in a 2000 year old city, the old houses are leaning to each other, keeping the group standing up like the big giant trees in Cathedral Cove. So be advised, for the next two and a half hours, you will see me drawing lines, lines and more lines. So don't fall asleep. Nah, no worries, I'm only teasing. I will skip some parts and start the painting, but I got something new for you. Within three weeks, I will have an extended version available on our website with hours of painting and mixing tricks. So this might be interesting for the painters and students among you to learn some interesting techniques. So for now, we skip some parts and you will see that the perspective lines created already a kind of depth and the steps will certainly help. We let it all dry for a couple of days and then we can move on. I filled in the dark parts with English red and the flower pots in the front will get the same treatment. So this is our worksheet, all complete. With a few lines we created depth and perspective as we can walk up the stairs. And now it's time for the basic colors. Yes, in Montmartre are lots of steps or stairs or whatever you want to call it to take. In all those French towns you have to be able to climb, like it or not. And the more south you go, the worse it will get. If you ever visit a village in the Pyrenees mountains or other mountain villages, well, start training because you have to climb. The sky in this case is pretty simple. 
I mixed a bit of grey and some light ochre tones to create a dark sky with a bit of pollution which you can see on a misty evening. The weather in Paris can be unpredictable. Sometimes it's soaking hot or it can be freezing cold. Anyway, with a light grey we can draw the silhouettes of the soccer coeur. And we can use a small round brush for that. Don't forget to lean your hand on the stick to take the pressure away. Later in this episode I will lead you around to this fantastic basilic. It's absolutely breathtaking. I visited this church a dozen times in my life and it's never boring. I can sit there on a bank for hours and just enjoy the beauty around me. With some light grey and a small filbert brush we can paint some mist around the domes, giving it a kind of mystic mood already. Let's do a bit more with some highlight and then we really have to start painting walls, because I got another 6 hours of painting footage to show you. Let's pretend there is on the top of the hill a little hallway where you can walk through to another part of the mountain. It will be lighted by a little lamp which is still not there. So we use dark yellow with a bit of red to create a warm light effect, almost orange. Maybe there's a door to another hallway, who knows. We are just fantasizing. If you ever walk to French and Italian cities you will see tons of these hidden hallways. Maybe this was an old gateway built by the Romans, who knows, maybe you had to pay to pass this old gate. And if you didn't pay, you could walk around the mountain for a two day walk and probably you were killed and robbed by highwaymen. Yes, those times were rough. You see, when I'm painting I always make up little stories, it makes it just more exciting. We can fill in the walls with a combination of a light ochre tone and a light grey tone. I didn't mix it too well because these old walls are rough. On top we can shut it off with a grey rusty gutter. As the light is coming from the right we can paint some shadows with a middle grey tone and fade them out. I told you already it's early in the evening with lots of dark clouds, but maybe there is a low sun peeping through these ancient alleys, which gives us painters an exciting light to play with. And with the help of the stick we can paint the big cutter on the other building. As this side is in the shadow we keep it dark adding a bit more grey and some burnt shadow. And this will give a great ancient looking wall which is beaten up by wind, rain, snow and other bad times. Now let's make the window dark, just with a dark grey and with a bluish grey we can give the impression of a sky reflecting in the glass. For painting the windows and the extensions the stick is always a great help. Remember these are all sturdy and simple condos with no luxury, keep that in mind. The left wall is catching the late sunlight so we keep it light with light ochre and grey just filling it in with the filbert brush. With a dark grey we can create some shadow of the cutter faded out to create a nice gradient. And now the fun part starts, we are playing with the knife. I put a little roll of highlight on the knife and start scratching over the wall. Important is that the underlayer is wet. Never go with your knife over a dry underlayer, that doesn't work, although not for these kind of walls. To make it more worn out we can use more dark grey and burnt shenna. As mold is dripping down under the window, we can scratch the dark colors downwards there too, which looks fantastic. See how far you want to go with warning out these walls. Now let's do one more window because this guy has wooden shutters. You will find these old shutters everywhere in Belgium and French to keep the houses cool and dark. 
For these shutters, we can use a bit of grey and blue to make it worn out. Let's paint the walls on the other side of the alley with the same sandstone colors, but a bit darker to create contrast. First, we take a little break because I want to show you Montmartre. We are in the ancient heart of Lutetia, like the Romans used to call it. More than 2000 years ago, the Parisi, a Celtic tribe, settled a fisherman village on an island in the River Seine. So if you ever do the walk on the Montmartre, remember you are walking over 2000 years of history. In the old quarter of Montmartre, you will see typical French houses and alleys like this one. Very high and small. And you will discover little beauties like the Moulin ici, here on the corner of the street. I'm always talking French. Let's follow the old defense wall and see more typical corner houses like this. And suddenly, in the middle of the city, you will see a real winery. Vin du Clos, Montmartre. If you walk along, we can taste this wine at the famous café Le Consulat and have a croissant in the Bonnefranquette, both world famous because of the drinks and food. And after a delicious glass of wine, we take the right alley and this is the place where I got inspired for our alley painting. On the Place du Tetre, we are in the heart of Montmartre. For us painters, this is the center of the world. Here you can sit down for a drink, yes, another glass of wine, and one of the local artists will make a portrait of you. And I must say, some are pretty good. Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous présente le Basilique du Sacré-Cœur with an astonishing view over Paris. So let's take a deep breath and climb the 222 steps to the top of the hill for more adventures. Totally exhausted, we can take a little break and look over this mastodont of a city called Paris, because huge it is. And now you probably want to take a look inside. Well, it's massive too. I visited this place many times in my life and my neck still hurts from looking up to all the beautiful treasures. And you probably want to ask why did the French build a big basilic like this on the top of the hill? Well, the basilic was built to honor the 50,000 war victims of the French-German War of 1870. Yeah, the Germans and the French, they never get along in those days. Anyway. The clock of the church is one of the biggest clocks in the world, weighing 19 ton. 28 horses and hundreds of people were working day and night to get it all up the hill into the tower. The worship of the Holy Sacrament is ongoing and pilgrims all over the world are coming to this basilic. And let me tell you, wandering through this beautiful basilic makes you very humble and small. You will be impressed by so much man-made beauty. And probably you want to take a look high up in this tower. Well, let me tell you a secret what most of the visitors don't know or just miss. First, we have to step outside into the hell sunlight which will blind your eyes for a while. Then you go on the right into this little creepy alley where nobody dares to go. That is almost nobody. You pay a few coins to the lady who is sitting there for ages. And then she will send you into the catacomb du Sacre Coeur. You will follow a crazy number of extreme narrow steps and corridors where you expect to meet Quasimodo anytime. However, I remember now he was living in a different church, the Notre Dame, so no worries. And brave as we are, we are struggling to all kinds of creepy steps and narrow corridors and discover the first few where a stone devil is a guardian over us poor mortals. We're gonna speed up a bit because it seems to become an endless trip to heaven or hell, just what you want. And then totally exhausted and almost having a heart attack. 
we see this encouraging sign. It says, very friendly, one more effort, only 76 steps left. And yes, you want to scream and curse, but we are brave and with trembling knees we follow the incredible narrow steps where you hardly can breathe. But the reward is big. Et voilà, mesdames et messieurs, the best view ever over your beloved romantic city, Paris. Isn't that fantastic? And you are there all alone because nobody else was crazy enough to do this climbing exercise. And of course, we like to stay and chat, but we have to step down again and go back working on our painting. Yes, I did my best to give you a good impression of Montmartre. In the meantime, I did the wall with a knife. Now let me show you how we can paint a medieval old door. Like, there are thousands of them in old French cities. I mixed a bit of earth green with yellow ochre and painted the upper side of the door with a filbert brush. To make it rotten and old, I went into some burnt chenna and grey and moved it up into the green. Just keep on fading in till you're happy with the result. At the upper part we can do a bit more dark. With a knife I scratched over it with a bit of grey and this will make it really old and worn out. With dark grey we can damage the upper wall a bit more and draw the door in this wooden cover. On the extended version you will see more details. The damage in the corner of the wall gives us a great look into history. These houses were built with rocks stapled up like a giant jigsaw puzzle till everything fitted. The builders added a bit of masonry, not too much and covered the construction with some sandstone plaster. This came with a home guarantee of 2000 years and if you have complaints, stand in line on the main cemetery in Rome. There rest in peace or more in pieces the guys who invented these techniques. On the average, houses and walls are built like that in France, Italy and Spain. The good thing is that even after a light earthquake, the stones will only fit in better than before. Let's paint some steps. Paris is full of steps. Thousands of them. With a mix of ochre grey and burnt chenna, we set up the dark parts first. And in between, it took me 3 to 5 hours to do all these steps. But don't worry, I will skip that part. As you have seen 3 of them, you will know what to do. Give it some shadow, make it rough and use your fantasy. In the extended version you will find a drawing and a photo. So let's move forward. I sketched a flower pot roughly on the left side, but I will come back to that later. We make the last few steps bigger for a great perspective and 3D illusion. And we fill in the lower part with a sandstone color. For this color I use the middle ochre tone grey and some burnt chenna and shake the brush and keep it pretty rough and no blending. Then we can make a rough sketch with a dark grey for the tiles. The flower pot, we can start with dark grey. Paint the middle part with burnt chenna and in the middle an ochre tone for the light. With a clean brush we fade it softly in and we have a flower pot. And yes, I admit I have a serious addiction. I like to paint a water puddle wherever I am, I just can't help it, I have to do it. Maybe it's a bad youth and no, I was not beaten up or bullied, but I have to paint a reflection. You saw me doing this tons of times in other episodes, so you know what to do by now, but admit it's kinda cute. You might have noticed that my street lamp was finished because he was too low. This can happen, so let's draw a new lamp. Paris was considered in 1558 the light city of Europe with oil lamps everywhere. And with the invention of a special lamp with reflectors, the Reverber, 
Paris had a spectacular new oil lamp. In 1812, the natural gas is here, and there is light everywhere. In 1878, Paris is the first city in Europe who gets electrical light. And at present, Paris is still beating every other city as the light city of the world. Let's paint a round flower pot. We start with orange in the middle, go around it with an ochre tone, and around that we go with bird sienna. On the edges, a very dark grey. With a soft filbert brush, we fade it in, and there it is, we have a nice round flower pot. Let's do a bit of work on the lamp. With a dark grey, we can give it more body. With some English red, we can make it rusty. Let's light up the lamp. First, we paint orange in the inside, and in the middle, the flame with a highlight. Let's decorate the old ancient walls. We start with the corners using the fan brush with two colors on each side. Dark green and light green. How simple can it be? Now watch the technique. I wiggle and wiggle and wiggle with the fan brush and move my way up slowly to the top. Then with a small round brush we can bring in some light little leaves. It's up to you how much you want to do. Let's go down below in the corner and maybe there is a lovely jasmine tree growing out of nowhere along these old walls. With a mix of dark grey and burnt chenna, we can paint a kind of trunk and branches with a small round brush. We move slowly upwards, but before we go on, I want to paint a light in the dark room down below. Maybe we can make it a little cafe or restaurant, who knows? In our world, everything is possible. Before we put in the flowers, we can paint the green foliage first. It is the same technique and yes, we wiggle and wiggle all the way up through the wall. In French, Italy and Spain, you will see that most of the old back alleys of like these are covered with green and flowers. Let's take a little break and listen to this. If you ever need some help with mixing colors, you are always welcome in our beautiful lesson center in Qualicum Beach. It's always nice to have a little chat with people who love to paint or enjoy art or watch my paintings to get inspiration. I love to do west coasts, portraits, and of course wildlife like eagles, owls, wolves, or you can admire the paper artwork of elves and her beautiful cards. As you might know, I love to donate paintings to the North Island Wildlife Recovery Center in Arrington, a lovely place to sketch wildlife. You can meet the famous gang like Casey the Bald Eagle or Farley the Owl. I made portraits of these wonderful birds and they love your attention. Or you can measure yourself with the beers or just have a great relaxing walk to the center. Yes, the wildlife center is always a very inspiring place for us painters. Let's fill in the flower pots. With the same move we can paint the foliage first. With a mix of white and Elysium Crimson, we can push the small round brush top into the wet green. This will create a flower in one move. We can start with a dark mix and push it one more time with a lighter mix. And yes, it will ruin your brush top. So use a cheap small brush or maybe an old one. I always keep a few oldies in stock for this kind of techniques. We will do the same technique for the pot of roses in the corner. We use a dark cadmium red and by pushing the small round brush top into the wet green you will create a faraway rose in one move. How cool is that? There is however one condition, it works only wet in wet. We already made a kind of underlayer 
and it doesn't always look nice, but green is very transparent, so it always needs a few layers. With a few fallen leaves, it looks pretty romantic. Let's take a look at the gutters above on the right side. In Paris, in most of the French cities and villages, gutters and walls are a great opportunity for ivy plants. In Holland we call it Blue Rain and you name it Wisteria. It grows like hell and if you need a quick coverage of your fans or an ugly wall, that is the solution. But be advised, it will take over other plants and it ruins your wall. But it looks romantic and that is what we painters need. I will let dry the green underlayer and paint some jasmine flowers in the wet green on the other side using a simple plain white. I did the green foliage one more time to create a wet underlayer. I mixed a bluish purple with ultramarine and a lysum crimson, but I used a bit more blue. And with titanium white, I created three tones, dark, middle and white. I started with a dark tone and painted the light leaves in by pushing it into the wet paint. And maybe you have to practice a bit, but at the end you will get it. It needs a soft touch and before you know, we have a nice bunch of wisterias hanging on the old wall. And see how low you want to go. It's up to you, just go ahead and have some fun. Now I almost forget to put a little lamp in the corridor, otherwise the orange glow makes no sense. And with the city sounds in the background, we might say this painting is done. Like I said, it was a lot of work, but we had a lot of fun too. I will make an extended version like I promised, but give me three till four weeks. Just check out our new website and you will find it. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next time and keep on painting.